Welcome to another session of two old guys talking about stuff. And important stuff. Yeah, I, actually, and this is probably more important than the other really important stuff we always talk about. Uh, <laughs> our, our, how does our friend Grace call uh, our empty palaver? Uh, yeah. This is not so much. Uh, look, as we get older, uh, we get uh, more, as a matter of fact, I want to continue getting older because we're going to more and more memorial services that are not our own. And, right. Uh, and uh, we, fortunately, John and I both have some really long standing uh, business and personal relationships and people pass on. And uh, we went to a very nice memorial service for uh, a dear friend. We're not going to mention names or anything. It was very well done. And uh, we have really, some technical... Really, it, it... It's it's one of those services that I think is accurately called a celebration of life. Yes, and and, and they're wonderful uh, experiences because you, you hear the good stories and the good memories, and holding somebody in your heart is important. Mm. But I think we learned a lot from it, not yeah. only about our friend and his uh, his background and all that, but I think we learned kind of a lesson for all of us. Wouldn't you agree, Art? Oh, absolutely. And uh, uh, and I know that you you began to mention it to me, so I'm going to let you uh, uh, talk about it a bit. But we've talked about the kind of things, uh, these things uh, over a period of time. But it was a reminder of the importance of uh, uh, planning and updating your plans, uh, because sometimes we do planning for what we're going to do at the end of our days. And uh, that could have been 15, 20 years ago, and things changed. Right. Right. Our friend is at unfortunately was very ill for a long period of time. So it wasn't as much as it was very sad. It wasn't a shock uh, that he passed away. And it was it was a wonderful, almost a party. I can't call it a party, but it was a wonderful gathering. But it made me realize that any of us could go at any time. Here we are living a nice to a ripe old age, hope to live another 10 or 15 years. But you never know, even when you just enter your second uh, act at what we arguably say is age 50, um, you never know when you're going to die mm -hmm. or how you're going to die. And uh, I think the point is, the takeaway for me is that you need to be prepared. You need to get your affairs in order. And um, I think that's for everybody at any age, get your affairs in order. And it changes as, as you grow older. Yeah. And, and so uh, I, I think uh, what, when, what, what John really uh, uh, reminded me about and in fact, we did take care of this a couple of years ago, is uh, you may have made plans at 50 uh, when you had uh, maybe some kids still in school, uh, particularly if they were in college and you were paying for that kind of stuff, and that you may have to put in your will that you left more funding for one kid or the other one, not because you particularly liked them better or worse, but that some of them were grown and were somewhat independent. And then the other ones still had a dependency for a number of years. But once they finished up and went out on their own, you probably might want to, you know, rewrite that section of it so that uh, it's updated from if that's what your true wishes are. But if you don't review the plans that you made uh, 20 or 30 years ago, you could be left with some really funny things that you probably didn't mean to do. Uh, uh, or you may have wanted to add a charity now that you didn't have certain dependencies that you didn't do before because you knew there might not be enough money left over. So doing those things. And uh, and recently, John, uh, you uh, and Penny uh, made uh, uh, final arrangements. Uh, right. We made funeral arrangements, mm -hmm. found a burial plot. That's all taken care of. Uh, save the kids the trouble. Yeah. Um, Connected with some relatives, you know, do I want to be buried here or there or whatever, or scattered at sea, whatever it is. So um, I think it's important that you k keep in touch with the fact that we are all going to pass away sometime. And uh, you don't really want to leave a mess for those people that love you to take care of. So arrange your affairs now and then Keep updating them. Yeah, and also I would say that review it with uh, the people that you want to be the trustees of the estate. Uh, right. So, for instance, and for many of us, it'll be uh, one of our children. And you want to let them know, have you changed bank accounts? Uh, where are all the forms they need? Uh, that sure. kind of thing. And even that's, if you've given them, we gave our, our, our 
our kids a, a book that had a copy of our living trust in it, for instance. But every four or five years, you might want to just review it with them, make sure that they have your your uh, uh, medical uh, uh, end of life uh, concerns, have a copy of it and things like that. Because if they need right. it and they can't find it, uh, you won't, they won't be able to do it, even if you wanted them to. Yeah, it's a long list of things that could be done, and I'm sure it's all available online. Yeah. The important thing is to don't neglect it. Yeah, and one last thing about this wonderful uh, a friend of ours uh, uh, who recently passed, we know that in the last two or three years, uh, he updated uh, his uh, end of life uh, situation. Right. And the time that he did pass, it went smoothly for the entire family because he yeah. he and his uh, wife uh, took the time and the care to make sure that it was all brought up to date. And without that, it might have been a pretty messy end. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.